the RCT that, that uh, used three drugs, albeit they didn't dissolve, some of them and the doses were low. Um, the conclusion was that the antibiotics affect somehow the, um, the gut flora. But there have been other antibiotics that would be and the yet same there were and they don't... Twelve trials and blinded trials using antibiotics that do not affect MAP and they haven't shown any effect large uh, meta-analysis of that has shown this. So that conclusion, which was not based on any data from the paper, was a false conclusion by the author and should be withdrawn publicly, I think. All right. So in your patients that do do well on the anti-MAP, uh, what are some of the, the um, clinical signs that you see of, of healing and, and well, remission? Well, the symptoms uh, first, patients, diarrhea, cramping, urgency, tiredness, uh, become better and better progressively over weeks and months, sometimes six months it takes. Uh, as they heal up the lining, they lose less blood, have less urgency, less need to, to pass stool and, and have mucus in your blood. And as the progressive healing occurs, which can take up to a year and a half before you can actually see it on colonoscopy, um, they progressively improve, have less requirement for iron infusions, blood transfusion, uh, admission to hospital, and so it's a very slow process, mind you. These bacteria do not divide every two minutes. They can take up to a year to grow. And we only um, kill bacteria when they divide. So it's a, it's a very long process. This is an unusually slow-growing bacteria. And I think the therapy has to, be, has to be suited to that purpose. And so when we first started treating patients, I empirically treated for three years because tuberculosis is treated, was treated then for 18 months. And then I thought we'd go and stop it all, see what happens. And yes, we did. And those patients who healed up completely with negative histology, we stopped the treatment. And within a year, the first patient had a recurrence, relapse. And this is not the relapse that we talk about, that, that uh, gastroenterologists talk about. This is histological normality with then relapse of inflammation. Whereas in Crohn's disease activity index uh, language, relapse is an increase again of. Of a, of a number. So within a year there was a relapse of histological and colonoscopic um, activity. One patient um, went on for, for, for five and a half years before he had a relapse, which means we must have profoundly suppressed the, the infection or that he had a reinfection, which I doubt. It takes such a long time to develop from John Herman Taylor's work. So then we realized that this is a for-life treatment at this stage. Uh, we mustn't lose sight of the possibility of development of vaccines that may stimulate our own immune system, which is defective in this condition, so that we don't harbor MAP intracellularly. That, that long point from infection to, to, to seeing any sign of the disease, is that sort of, are you seeing, are you thinking that a lot of children young ages are, are most susceptible and are becoming infected when they're young and then in their teens are finally showing the disease? No one has actually carried this out in people, but we do know from cattle that it takes a long time to develop clinical disease. There is a subclinical stage until something happens. They either get stressed, animals get stressed, or they develop a secondary infection. And I think the same thing happens with Crohn's. You, you harboring the bacterium, because most of us have it, and then something happens like a secondary infection overseas on a trip and then you get diagnosed with Crohn's. And it may well be that this is a precipitant for the immune system that actually stimulates that event. As far as learning how long it takes, there was one case written up by John Herman Taylor where a young fellow had an infection with a map in the lymph node and I think it was seven years later that he developed terminal ileitis. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives you a time course of how long it takes. Um. The tolerability of the anti-MAP side effects? Well, the anti-MAP drugs are rifabutin, clarithromycin, clofazamine, and sometimes we also add ciproxin to start with. And because we use up a ramping up dosing so that low doses are started with uh, of all the drugs together, uh, initially when we started, uh, we noticed patients developing low levels of white cells, leukopenia, low platelets, uh, some hepatitis. We didn't get one patient with iritis. Uh, so that the therapy had to be stopped. That was with John Herman Taylor's um, uh, group. So we learned quite early not to start with a full dose. And the toler tolerability is surprisingly good. In the RCT paper, for example, 
um, Selby and others showed that the side effects are not very different from, from normal drugs or, or even from placebo. So, uh, surprisingly good tolerability. We have patients for up to 12 years on treatment and we've not had to stop the patient because of major side effects except for thrush in one, in one lady. So this right. is also David. Wow. Good. Been on treatment, you've been on treatment for about 12 years. 12 years, yeah. Can I ask him how ill he was to start with? Yeah. Ill. Yeah, how sick were you? Extremely ill. Tell us. Ah, uh, constantly had diarrhea. 10, 12 times a day, if not 15 times a day. Constantly, day in, day out. You know, um, had no life, as you probably know. I understand your saying, illness. And that was it, it's just a terrible life. Terrible. No quality of life whatsoever. You had very low hemoglobin. Yes, yes. hemoglobin was yes. 85. Very low. Did you did you have uh, uh, any need for extra iron? No. Just had the iron infusion. You may recall. Yeah. Mm. Didn't have the transfusion. Uh, were you on prednisone? Yes. What did that do to you? What it did to me? The side effects that come out now. I've had two hips resurfaced. Two hip replacements. The last one was eight weeks ago, and then my knee's done. I still want to take all my cartilages away. So the cartilage is damaged by long-term steroids, yeah, and years. you've not been on steroids for, for years now, yeah. have you? About 15 years. So and when I met you about 18 years ago, 18, 20 years ago? Yes, yeah, when we started, but 12 years ago plus, I'm not sure how many years, just 12 and a half years that you've been on anti map mm -hmm. therapy. That's correct. What's the tolerability as you see it with, with anti map I know she got a nice tan. That's an anti map tan. Yeah. Looks like you're on highs all the time. Yeah. So what uh, what side effects have you noticed? None really. What do you do? You have a brown skin. Oh, brown skin. There's a urine yeah, colour change. Urine, yeah, colour change. About it really. Okay. No, 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 no side effects. Yeah, there, there are side effects. Some oh, I, some I, people develop arthralgia no. early. If you take no. a dose too high, you might have a, a chemical hepatitis. Um, people don't get nausea, headaches, or no. dizziness, but some non-specific symptoms are reported. Um, in some situations you can get a fever from rifibutin if you go too fast with it, mm. but if you do ramp it in, you end up with results like, like David. Did you have side effects? No. I may, I may have had slight flu-like. Yeah. I did have a metallic taste. Right. Um, yeah, it's a classic. Gives you a bad taste. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be lucky. Yeah, the majority of people don't have problems. It's, a, it's an exception rather than a rule, which is good. Uh, what drugs you you're taking prednisone and you've tried other drugs like the immune suppressants, uh, surgeries, anything else? Not a surgery. No. No, no but you you, you had a fistula that healed up. Yeah, I had yeah fistula. And you may not remember all the drugs, but he was on most things that have been available. Mm -hmm. Just did so, so much history. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was a nasty, those nasty drugs. Okay. And now today it's. Great. Symptoms, yeah, fantastic. You ran your company, uh, which is um, a yeah. smash, smash repair. We call it in Australia. What's it called in the US? Not where they fix up wrecked cars. Damaged um, vehicles. Yeah, yeah. Accident repair yeah. center. Yeah. You might call it. So he runs his company eleven days a week, sort of thing. <laughs> twenty four hours a day. Uh, and you couldn't do that if you have anemia. You're tired. You're unwell. So I think it's really changed his life. That's good. The quality of life is fantastic. For the patients that are on IndyMap or any other Crohn's disease patients, do you ever recommend uh, any specific diets or avoiding foods that may or may not be likely to uh, reinfect? It's a good that? question because we went through that thinking, and you really can't protect yourself away from MAP because it's in in the food chain. And if you're taking antibiotics, well, who cares? You know. Whereas if you've wanted to restrict, you will never restrict foods that will contain MAP, whether it's not just purely in milk, meat and water, it's in canned foods, you know, it's hard to, to, to block it. Um, you start becoming a recluse if you boil everything and even then you can't get rid of it. So I think we went from the attitude of not of worrying about milk and meat to, um, to saying eat what you like as long as you stay on the antibiotics, it doesn't matter.